Right before we jump into this video, if you'd like me to send you a free guide to capturing motion in low light situations, just look for this orange box over on the website, put your name, email address in it, hit send it, I'll send you that guide for free. Jared Poland, Fronos Photo. Dot com and I had a friend of mine who was in one of the biggest bands in the world at one time who's doing a side project and he needs a new album cover for an album that's going to be released at some point and he showed me an image of a needle in a groove and he said can you do something like this because I would love to use for an album cover a needle in a groove and my answer was was yes but in my head, I was like, I don't know how the hell I'm going to do this. But I wasn't gonna say no, because as a photographer, the challenge is, can you figure out how to make this happen? And if somebody else had already done something similar, then it's not out of the question that this is going to be possible. So I said, yes, let me sit with it for a few days and make some calls. So what did I do? I spoke to some scientist friends who have worked with microscopes to see if they knew how this was done. I reached out to a college to see about getting a scanning electron microscope or getting access to a scanning electron microscope. Those are like millions of dollars. And I did a lot of research online to try to figure out how this was done. And what I came upon was a rental site where you could rent microscopes. And they're a little expensive, eight, hundred, a thousand dollars for a couple days. And I came upon an Olympus one that looked like it was gonna be exactly what I needed. There were lenses that you could change. There were lights in the lenses. You could tilt the head of the entire field. You can make micro adjustments. It was of course digital. You could record the video out uh, like with an Atomos. And I was like, I, I want this. And so what did I do? I Googled Olympus microscopes found the Olympus USA website or the Olympus of America website, which is linked down below. And I found a phone number to one of the sales representatives, called the sales rep, said, hey, I, I have this challenge. I have a YouTube channel. What do you think? They got approval to send a technician down with a $65,000 setup for me to attempt to get a photo of a needle in a groove. So we only had one day to try and accomplish this because we had the technician for one day and they were gonna operate everything and set everything up. The setup is pretty insane. They pull out a tower computer, you've got the monitor, you've got the microscope itself, you have all of the different lenses. There's like the 10X and the 40X and amazing glass, just amazing the way that this thing works. And the reason we had a technician is because one, we didn't know how to set this thing up. And there's so many different buttons and switches digitally in the program to operate this that we wouldn't have known where to start. So that's why it was great that Olympus sent us a technician down to help us facilitate getting the image that we ended up getting. So one of the biggest challenges of this entire shoot was how do you get a needle in a groove and then get it in the microscope set up properly to then capture an image of exactly what you need. Yeah, it's not very easy. So I directed the entire shoot. It, the ISO and, and light, now it may say gain versus ISO, but it still all works the same. How long do you want the shutter open? How long do you want the aperture to be? There's, there's all of these different things. And so I was directing the technician who knew how this stuff worked. He had some really good ideas for how to get the needle to stand up. So the first shoots that we were doing, he had like this gum material that we used to, we basically ripped the needle off of the cassettes that I bought. I bought five cheap cassettes on Amazon and you rip one of them off and you could see the needle. I can't see the needle cause I'm blind, but we put the gunk on one side, I cut up a sample record. It was some children's album that I had from like the 70s. Hopefully it wasn't worth a lot of money. Sorry if it was, but that way I didn't have to cut up the band's album yet until we knew what we were doing. So the challenge was how do you attach it? How do you get it in the groove? What lens do you use? So when we started off, we started with the wider angle lens just to get a feel because you don't, you, you have a little bit more play when you're changing the platforms and moving your X's and Y's and ups and downs and tilting the head because you're not zoomed in as much. And the more macro you go, the more micro you go, the harder it is to make fine adjustments because just breathing on something can throw it totally out of whack and could move the needle from the groove once you get it there. So this was very challenging. So after a couple of test images, we realized that the technician was doing digital zoom. 
Now, we don't want digital zoom because when you're working with like a one megapixel sensor or maybe a little bit more than that, that the more you zoom in, the more the imperfections show up and the less quality that you have. And especially when you're working with such a small file to begin with, you don't want to start cropping in the camera. You want to get as close as possible with the optics. And that's what this microscope let us do. You could pop one lens out and pop another lens in. And what's cool is that they have light passing through the actual lens to light up the field. Because when you get super close to something, you're blocking all of the light. We also realized that instead of raising the ISO or the gain in the system, why don't we just add extra light? So we broke out this LED, what's this one called? The app, this is from Aperture. This is the uh, AMRAM, is this the AMRAM? Something along those lines. This is an Aperture LED light and we would just blast the light in there. The light is our friend and it also started to create some interesting color shifts when we use the polarized light setting. There's a whole bunch of different lights you can throw at this. There were like six or seven or eight different options because this microscope is used for um, imperfections and they can show different lights which then shows different aspects of whatever is under the microscope. We found that the polarized one was kind of the coolest. So one of the crazy things is when you would shift the light and just move it around, you get some interesting bounce light back through the microscope, honestly, I don't know what is exactly happening here, but I kind of like it. But now let's jump into the computer because I want to show you the progression to how we got to the best of the best, what I think is the cover shot, um, starting with the original image. This was taken from Google, so this was the, the, the challenge. He's like, can you do this? And uh, wow, that's one needle in a groove and it's really cropped and it's really interesting. So. Let me show you some light changes. This right here is just, we were testing out the microscope on the Olympus business card of the technician. I mean, this is what happens when you change a different light. That's the ink. That's insane how close you can get. And these are the individual dots put onto the, the business card. That was awesome to see. And also throwing under there this is an iPhone. These are the individual LED lights of an iPhone screen. That was just a fun little thing just to see what you can do with it. So you can understand that this has a lot of industrial use for it. So if you're in industrial use and you need to take a close look at something, you got $65,000 to spend, check out Olympus America. Thanks, Olympus America. Let me jump in here real quick because I want to show you how our Fropac presets work on this image right here. Let's start with Fropac 3 and King Contrast. Ooh, that looks sweet, but how's Gotham look? Gotham looks good like Batman and Bane. That looks pretty cool too, but let's go up to Fropac 2 and check out Harvest Moon. Now that's Harvest Moon Vibrant and you kind of need sunglasses for it, but how's regular Harvest Moon? Nice, look at that. It's just pulled back just a little bit and then why not throw in some Bob Ross? Bob Ross is pretty vibrant as well. Now keep in mind, this isn't from a raw file, so you don't have all the same data that we normally have, but I think these are looking great. Then we've got Fropac 1 and we've got Silver Tide. And holy Jesus, does Silver Tide look amazing with one click. And then my favorite, which I ended up going with, was Color Boomify. So if you're looking to speed up your raw workflow or give yourself a great starting point like I did right here, then we created 15 all new custom Lightroom presets that you can check out right now at fronosphoto.com slash fropack3. While you're over there, you can play with the sliders to see the befores and the afters. And if you decide that you like them, you can pick them up right now on sale. Or if you wanna get the super duper Fropack bundle, triple play, Fropack one, two, and three, you can save even more. Now. Let's get back to the video. Now let's get into this. So this is kind of like a needle near a groove. Now I showed you how small this image is. It was, it, it's not big. Was it a thousand pixels, Steven? 1200 by 1200. So we're at 1200 by 1200 pixels is the final image. Um, and this is just starting off with uh, a not super high magnification. I mean, it's obviously still pretty close. You're getting to, I didn't even know that the needle was ruby red and it showed up ruby red. And you can see the grooves of the, the record right here. Um, and then we start to get closer, but it's still not perfect. We're trying to figure things out. It's a lot of cause and effect. If I do this, this is what's gonna happen. If I move this too much, we have to start all over. And that was the, that was the challenge. 
And, and look, I love this top down of the grooves. And it, it's just amazing to see the imperfections of like a needle went over this. And that's why it's a little cut there. But I was like, how the hell are we gonna get down even closer to get the actual grooves? I'm like, well, there the grooves are. We're not close enough. And so we started to build on that. We started to switch to the, the higher magnification. But as you add magnification, you're cutting down on light because you're getting super close. And so it was definitely not really easy to do. But we started to find our groove, pun absolutely intended right there. And the gook on this, on the needle right here, the gook is actually the, 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 the glue that we used to, to, to get the needle in place. So we ended up having to clean that off um, once we did, but now we're getting closer and closer and you're starting to see that, wow, this actually is possible. These grooves are in there. We're getting closer, still not perfect, but it's all a building process. Now this color, look at the gold. I don't know how gold is coming off the vinyl that is dark, but I'm loving the pink that we're getting. I just, I mean, that is a needle in a groove. It's insane that this is possible. So closer and close, this is super close. I mean, we got really close and then what happened is if you move something, you kind of lose it and have to start all over again. So that's one of the things that if you're ever trying this yourself at, at any point, if you get really close, do not move anything. Just like do micro adjustments. Don't like try to replace everything. Don't do anything that might move it out of the field of view because once you lose it, it's hard to find it again. I mean, we shot for a good eight hours we shot for a good eight hours with this. I mean, maybe if we had day two, we would have been able to go much quicker because we had a better understanding of what to do and what not to do. But check this out. Look at these grooves right here. Let's, let's not zoom in because I don't have any megapixels to do it, but watch what happens here. More in focus, less in focus. You can do image stacking, focus stacking right inside of the computer with the microscope. So it's taking hundreds, if not thousands of different pictures at one time. I mean, one of the exposures took like five minutes. It wasn't a full exposure because it was all of these exposures, but the entire exposure took five minutes and we ended up missing. We ended up missing that one and it wasn't good, but you could stack thousands of images together to start to get what you need. So we just kept playing around. You can see that it, it gives you a TIFF file um, at the end, which is okay. I mean, it's not terrible, uh, the TIFF file but we're not in one specific groove. Like I wanted to get even closer. Like this is a really good shot. It's still not the best of the best with honor, sir. That's coming up, but we're getting closer and closer. We never exactly pulled it off because like we got really close here, but something was off with the lighting and we weren't straight on and we just couldn't figure it out. So we come back here, mm, not perfect, not sharp enough. So we didn't have enough focus going on there. I also think we changed the type of lighting we were using. That's the groove. That's where we wanted to get to. And you can see this is the one that went for like five minutes and never, it didn't do enough, unfortunately, because we wanted to see that we could do it. Oh yeah, because this right here, this Ruby thing is the needle. That one would have been really good. Just very disappointing after five minutes to not get it. Another miss. But now, let's reveal you the final image. The best of the best with honor, sir. I love this. This is the black and white version, actually using Silver Tide, which is a preset from Pack one And this is the color version. So which one do you think is the best? Do you prefer the color for an album cover or do you prefer the black and white? I know that I think I would personally prefer the black and white if it was more jazzy but I love the color because it's gonna pop at someone. If someone's walking by an album, not that anybody goes to record shops, but I think that that's gonna pop a lot more than the black and white. The needle is not perfectly straight here. It honestly looks like a thumbtack in something, but the gold, the magenta color, the fact that you see the grooves, I actually like it better than it being just super tight with one groove. And I'm not just saying that because we didn't get a needle in a single groove. I think we would have gotten it perfect. I actually think that this is just cooler that you can see multiple grooves as well as the side of the album because we just cut it and this is what we ended up getting. Um, so this is a larger file because I used the super res of Lightroom to grow the file 
I even printed this out 17 by 22 in a square, which is bigger than the 12 by 12, what the album would end up being, and it looks great. So being able to take the original 1200 by 1200 image and then upsize it using Super Res, you could blow this up the size of a billboard and I think you would have perfect results. So this is what we ended up getting. This was an extreme challenge, but I kind of like being challenged and then seeing where my brain takes me to try and figure out, can we do this? And I think the answer to that is we did do it. We got something that's really darn good in the eight hours that we had. If we had more time, like another day, I think we could have gotten something different. I'm really happy with what I got there. And when you look at the final image, you've got the black and white, you've got the color right next to it, you have room for text. You have room for the album, the album name, the band name, whatever else you wanna put there, if you wanna put it there. You also have a bunch of images that can be great for liner notes and also the back of the album. So if you ever get asked, can you do something? The answer shouldn't be no right away. It should be, I think I can do this, or yes, let me look into it, and then, you try to figure it out. If you can't figure it out, then you're honest. You're like, look, I don't believe this is going to be possible or if I'm able to do this. So that's it, guys. What do you think? A, a big thank you to Olympus America for helping us here, for coming down, giving us a technician, letting us borrow a $65,000 microscope to play with and see what we could do with it. So that's where I'm gonna leave it. Thank you very much for watching. Jared, polinfronosphoto.com. See ya.